Yeah. I was I was fighting with the audio balancing. This run. I didn't expect this run to be the one. So this strat <clears throat> is something that I saw people do. Like pogoing the Vengefly Kings like this. It's something that I didn't do at the start when I played P5. But I saw a lot of uh speedrunners and uh and things like that. So I decided to do it myself and it really isn't hard, you just need to get used to the timing of the pogo. You can easily jump on them and pogo them at least three times on the edge of the screen. It's pretty it's pretty it's not too hard to do this. Jump, jump dash, pogo three times and you can even do it continuously if they let you. It's pretty cool. The good thing is that I can also I can also skip um this waiting for nothing times. Yep. So Guru's mother Okay, so Guru's mother is a very tricky fight because if you're not careful, you can take two damage in one hit because she hits into you and then you fall to the spikes. So you have to be at 3 HP. You can't really be at 2 HP. You can just die here. And I did die to Guru's mother in one of the runs where I wasn't really paying attention. Yeah. Paul Knight does nothing really special. It's a very easy boss. I use Cyclone because I'm hoping that Cyclone will just make this fight faster. Because Cyclone deals a lot of damage. So I Cyclone. And when he's staggered, I Cyclone again. And then I Shriek after he gets up from the stagger. Very casual stuff that you see a lot of people do. These fights are basically... Basically, not that hard at all, nothing special. Mm -hmm. So we know this is 37 hits, if you only use nail hits with all bindings. So it's 37 hits on Mossy. Which means it does take some time, but there is no real danger here. Hornet is also not that impressive, you just cyclone her and hit and shriek. Basically just uh, fight her pretty easily. Hornet protector is not a problem at all. She even gives you times to heal if you really need to heal.
So you can see I just made two big mistakes and it still doesn't matter. Because it's Hornet. And that's exactly what I'm trying to say about this fight. That it's really not a big deal. She's not a big threat. She deals one damage per hit. She's very slow. She gives you time to heal. Up. There's not much to say about Gorb. You can beat Gorb with nail outs. You can beat him with regular hits. I just beat him with nail outs because I got used to it. You really get used to nail outs when you're running this all bindings thing because nail outs deal more damage. If you think about it, a lot of bosses, when you have the time to hit them, you usually have time to hit them for one or two hits. A lot of bosses are like, like, they make a move and then you dodge and then you get a chance to hit. Um, so because nail outs deal two and a half uh, nail damage, it's worth using them. Instead of just hitting with the nail for 13, you hit for 26 plus 7, that is... Um, 32. So you hit for 32 instead of 13, it's worth. The only place you don't want to use nail outs are very, very fast fights. Or fights that, like, fights that are either faster or more mobile. It's kind of harder to use nail outs because you want to. You want to be mobile, and one of the issues with nail outs is that when you release the nail out, it hits, and then it just keeps you in the air for like a, for a short period of time. So you're like, you got like NBA hang time in the air. Dunk Defender is my favorite character in the game, by far. Let's just see that you guys can hear the video. Just a sec. See that there's desktop audio. Oh, it seems like there isn't. And then... Is it? Audio output. Okay. So, so does it work? Okay. Yes, it works. Okay. Now you guys can hear it. You know what's funny? This is actually epic. Calm music. It's calm and it's epic. I like it. Hope you can hear it well. If not, let me know and I'll up the volume.
So Warrior is really not a hard uh, boss. Rooting Molek also. Like, you just walk in, you hit, you go back, you walk this in, you hit, you go back. This is called classic music for villains, this playlist. I don't know why it is for villains, but I done. You can always heal after they jump twice. Just look at where they jump, then heal. Pretty easy. I use the D-Dark because I have the soul. I don't have to use it. I can shade soul, uh, shade cloak. They just had to point it out? Maybe. I don't know. But I'm enjoying it. It's very fun. So, at some point, fighting Oro and Mato, I started using nail outs. Maybe I should lower the game sound a bit. Yeah, I should. But now it's weird. <laughs> I don't know, it's weird. Oh, the, between 4 and 5, it feels like... Three levels between four and five. I was trying to balance the music. I didn't think I'm If you're I'm a good guy, uh, please do not open this playlist. Yes. Exactly. I didn't think I'm gonna beat this run. That's why I was balancing audio and doing stuff around. If I knew this was gonna be the run, I might have uh, not played the music in the background and, you know done it differently, but fine, it's all good. Mm, I missed. got much to say about this fight, it's kinda... I just got Cyclone Slash, congrats! Cyclone Slash OP Cyclone is actually a very 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 strong spell and sorry not spell, nail out So you get 6 hits of 1.25 nail damage so let's say I have 13 damage because I have bindings. 13 times 6, 78 damage. Yeah, that's the highest damage 
Uh, I think in the game. I think. Because Shriek does 60. Double Fireball does 60. Great Slash does 30 something. Yeah, I think Cyclone. Cyclone deals the most. So that's actually not true. And what's really true is that Cyclone depends on your nail. So if you have a very strong nail, it does deal more damage than Shriek. That is true. Um, but specifically, my calculation was wrong because nail with binding gives you 13 damage. Um, if you do 13 times 1.25 is 16 times 6 is 97 which basically means my calculation was wrong it's not 78 damage it's 97 damage um, which puts it very high damage um, but I was right about the high damage I was wrong about the amount of damage These villains listen to great music, huh? Crystal Guardian was mean to me. Or maybe I just fucked up. Or both. What? Yeah, I got that hit was by a fuck up. Crystal Guardian? That's not RNG that I can blame. Again? Also dead. And those are my fuck ups. Can't, fuck you, Crystal can't, Guardian. Can't really blame the. Uh, what the fuck? None of these were RNG Fuck or you. something. All of these were my fault. All of these were my fault. <laughs> so bad. So bad indeed. That was lucky, because I could have gotten hit there. I could have gotten hit from the dive, I was lucky he got staggered. Because Soulmaster is a villain, he identifies well with this playlist, right? Yeah. It was very lucky, I could have got hit there and lose 1 HP. Kinda trying to jump and do hits while dives, but not really. I still need to work on that strat. I'm not really good at it.
So what I don't like about the blobbles is no. besides the randomness. Why would he land on me like that? Sometimes they shoot a projectile. I mean, besides the bullshit and the and it randomness. Feels like <laughs> it feels like that you can't see the projectile sometimes. Does that make sense? But that's how I uh, feel. Why sometimes. would I dash like that? No idea. I guess in this one we're trying things. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't think this run would go so far as, as it did. The cyclone on the blob is really cool. I like that. Very cyclone. Okay, so this is not scary anymore because even if we get hit, we can just heal. I mean, the one blobble is fast, but we still have all of our mobility. And the arena is big, so. That's the good thing about the fight against the blobbles. They are very random, they are very annoying, but the arena is big enough to run away. Just need to be very careful, which I am not really in this fight, but you can be. That's what you're supposed to be. Again, I didn't Ouch. think this run is going How dare anywhere. You? But you see, we just charge a nail out, hit it, and hit another time, and dash away. Nothing special, really. This fight takes forever. When I first started fighting Sisters of Battle, I brought all of my Mantis Lords mechanics, so I mostly dashed. And you can't really do that in Sisters of Battle. You need to move a lot. You need to like stutter step to the left or to the right. Um, this fight really teaches you how to stutter step, how to move. Move a bit to the right, move a bit to the left. When they, when they jump on you, when they, yeah. Because you can't always dash. And sometimes dashing is bad, because you dash into another enemy. So you need to make small steps to the right or to the left. And if you manage that well, you win this fight without getting hit. Which is basically what you want. nothing much to say here if you're playing this correctly mobility wise you keep always one piece of mobility if it's a dash if it's a jump if it's a double jump you should be able to beat this fight without taking damage should you can always make small mistakes and get hit which I didn't this fight zero but, hit sisters yeah. if I had blue HP it would be really good but I don't so it's just a nice fight, but no That's real um, impact on the run. That's true, because I didn't have any blue HP, so it doesn't matter that I didn't get hit. 
it was like it's cool not to get hit, but it didn't help me with the rest of the run. I could have gotten hit three times and it didn't matter because we have a bench right after this fight. But still, hitless fight is nice. It shows that you know the fight, it shows that you know what to do. And you can execute it well, so... Yeah, because I lost a lot of HP to a Blobbles. Oh, yeah. oh. Malmo is just... One day I will understand how Malmo works. But sometimes you hit Malmo and he still hits you, doesn't matter. You, you predict his reaction, you hit and he still hits you, uh, so I don't really understand how Mamu works. Honestly, I don't think this was is too hard or too interesting to even commentate on. It's just an annoying random boss. The cyclone got fucked up. So the way I do this is not great. Because... I need to kill the... Small ads. From where I'm standing. But... Because you can shriek very easily. It's basically a, a very short battle anyway. Maybe I should get a better... Strat for that. Broken Vessel, the only problem I have with Broken Vessel right now, I had more problems with Broken Vessel, but the only problem I have with Broken Vessel right now is that he can randomly jump on you from nowhere and, and you get hit and you don't know what happened. Very similar to Lost Skin, but happens a lot less. <laughs> I was too greedy That there. was just my fault, that's not, that's that's not hit. Broken Vessel. Like that jump. That jump can hit you. And you can't even react to that. And Galleon, you really need to be patient and smart about your shrieks. Because if you're smart about your shrieks, you know that you can shriek from a certain angle that will not pull the boss into you. And and risk you but you really need to be smart and, and careful about it and patient about it and not just spam shrieks the moment you're under the boss it's not every time just in the times that that it's safe to do so like that, that is a safe opportunity to do so That was not a wow. opportunity, but he just died. I don't think so. I had a zero hits Galleon, like, in a very long time. So with Chio, I really like the nail arts. <clears throat> because the timing works really well with the nail arts. Like, he doesn't attack, you dodge, <coughs> you go in for a nail out. It, it, it works very well into his attacks. You do need to jump every time he does the yellow thingy. It's very important. And there well, aren't many... You know that song. There aren't many good... Uh, opportunities. Hello. To Shade Soul? Um, not really. If you want to keep safe, that is. One good opportunity is when he does the red attack. This. 
And then he rolls back, so Shade Soul while he rolled back can get a double. Which is nice. But overall, I think the nail outs are just winning this fight on their own. Just keep your distance, dodge his stuff. Shouldn't be hard enough. So this was a really good Galleon and Chio. Zero hits that was Galleon, a zero very, hits Chio. very special Galleon and Chio that I haven't had for a long time. Yeah. Tried to dash, but didn't register. Guess it was too late. I don't know. You got it? Holy shit, congrats. Thank you. Thank you very much. I got it yesterday, yes. And I'm watching the, the run from yesterday. How are you, Shoemaker? Good to see you. Hope you can hear me well, because I'm using a, a different scene in OBS. Audio is perfect. dead. Okay. Thank you. Um, wow. I'm very good because very yesterday. Because yesterday I beat this and I'm very happy about it. Okay. Time for our friend the collector. Collector is a really hard fight, to be honest. And I had to practice it a lot. And I learned a lot about this fight. Basically. You start with phase one, so he jumps and jumps and jumps and summons only one bug. Because he summons only one bug, I don't use Cyclone, I just use Great Slash on the jars that he summons, because I want to kill them in one hit, you know? I just want the bug to die, so I can focus on him. And the second phase is when the mess, the, the, the real mess starts. This is the easy part. Here, this is like the phase 2 when it starts summoning more. So you have to use Cyclone here to deal with uh, multiple enemies. Yeah. And the Aspids. And you have to use... Yeah, your spells are basically your get out of jail for freak out. Basically. So like if you fucked up your Cyclone you got hit, if there are multiple bugs, you use the spell to clear them Two out. Two hits already from Collecto. Yeah. Not so great. Yeah, I had better fights. But you have to clear the bugs all the time, because if you don't, they just overwhelm you. Oh, it's close. I ah, really I landed on me and stopped my D-Dark. I was doing Descending Dark and he, and he jumped straight on me from the ceiling. I had no time to react. <laughs> it happens. But overall a good fight, because 3 hits from Collector. You can take 10 hits here, so taking 3 is Damn you pretty collector. good. Pretty good. This boss is basically 
I would call him annoying more than hard because he likes to spit and basically the rolls are, are easier to react to than the spits because the spits have a lot of area where you can't stand in and you can't touch and stuff like that the rolls are just very like you know what he's gonna do when he rolls right you know he's gonna roll at you, he's gonna roll at the wall and come back at you. It's very teleported. Very obvious. I never had a problem with God Tamer after beating uh, P2, P3. You really like spitting, huh? It's so annoying that they spit. Okay. Grim is also like an, like a, I wouldn't say easy fight, but I would say good fight, because eventually um, he doesn't do anything special, his patterns are very very obvious before he attacks you, you have a lot of time to move and to dodge before he does anything, so... Group Master Grimm is really not something hard. He's basically a slower version of NKG, which is also not a really hard boss, just very fast boss, I would say. And I copied this Cyclone from, uh, from Exle. I saw him using it and I liked it. I like the cyclone. Uh... I liked using the cyclone there because it deals a lot of damage. Probably more than uh, more than great uh, slash. Probably. Yeah, that cyclone. Yeah, this fight is very fun because it's very teleported. You know exactly what you need to do. You can dodge easily. It's really up to you to not get hit here. There's no RNG to blame. There's, like, it's all you. Which is good, because that's what you want. You want to fight things that you can practice and just get good at. Not count on RNG saving you or hurting you. You're still here, Shoemaker? Yes, not. Okay. We got Watcher Knight. Watcher Knight is usually one of my worst fights Just because I Kind of mess up the dodges Sometimes I walk into them By mistake Sometimes I don't have My double jump or my Dash, sometimes I just land on them while they're rolling Like it's not an easy fight to uh, To deal with perfectly Without taking any damage Music is funny as well. Ah, I tried to dash to the other side. Why oh, didn't move?
But it happens sometimes that I press the dash before I switch sides. Yep. It Whoa. does happen. Relax, bro. You think about the dash before you think about the arrow key, if that makes any sense. Solid, only one hit for Mocho Knight. It's solid. So Umu is RNG, but mostly about patience. If you're patient enough, you shouldn't take damage here. It's mostly my fault if I take damage here. Mostly my fault. Obviously there are things I can't control, like landing on a jellyfish that I didn't see, or maybe the one of his attacks is very unfavored. But overall, it's mostly patience. Especially after you've fought this a few times and you know what not to do. Jellyfish can get stuck in the platform and explode on you, stuff like that. You really don't want that to happen. That was okay. Kind of dangerous now. Does it still get hit in the platform? There's not much to say about Wingnosk. The mistakes evaluation, greetings. Yeah, we're evaluating what happened in this run and how we get so far after playing so bad. <laughs> So 
So I like doing this, jumping, hitting with pogo, dashing to the to the side, and hitting again with the pogo. It's a very nice strat. Gives you two hits in one in one cycle. And I just randomly pause because I need to ban. Either I need to ban someone or I need to balance the audio. Don't remember. Anyway, the problem with Sly is that sometimes he corners you and you need to react and you can't because you don't know what he's gonna do. Yeah, there was a bot. There was a bot. I banned the bot. What the? Yeah, that. That, that. Let's look at that again. What the? Could I have not take damage from that? What the? Yes. What happened there? What the? Oh, I shrieked there? Okay, that was just that was a weird. misclick. That was a misclick. That that I can't blame Sly for that. It was a, it was my mis misclick. So as long as he doesn't corner you and you understand what he's gonna do, there shouldn't be any problem fighting this guy. His patterns are very obvious, his attacks keep repeating. There's no reason to take damage from this guy. Of course if you make a mistake, but if you if you keep up your execution and you don't get cornered, get out of the corners. And this should be a good fight. <laughs> and I'm pausing randomly. I don't know why I paused here, I don't remember. Let's move forward. Okay. Oh, th this, this part of the video is muted because of the... You only have issues for first few times because face tank strat doesn't work. Do they actually saw streamers that that's what they do? They face tank sly. I actually saw that and I was like, what? What's happening? You can dream nail him, by the way, at the end of the, at the, end of the fight to get soul. Okay, so Hornet was a really bad fight for me the whole... Every time I ran Pentium 5 all bindings, Hornet was a shitty fight for me. I kept getting hit. If it was 3 hits, 4 hits, 5 hits. And I think this is the only run that I don't take any damage from her. That's what I did at first, because that's what I always do when I face a new boss. Fair enough, fair enough. Not only Hollow Knight. Yeah, I, I honestly... Honestly, used to do that too in games. I think that attitude changed in this game specifically, especially after NKG, when I realized you can't really do that anymore. Um, but I used to do that as well. Just walk into enemies, guns blazing, just hit them in the face, take hits in the face, and even in like you know the the ga the games where you need to be like in stealth and be quiet and, and I just walk in and start shooting everyone and yeah I would do that as well so yeah the traps are really annoying because you got to the, the real annoying part about this fight is that everything is white, the background is white, Hornet is partially... she's white. Like her, her head, her, her shell, 
is white, the needle is white, so you get things that are white on a white background, so it's really hard to see them. So when she summons the traps, it's very hard to see them. So it, it's a lot harder than just fighting a boss when you can't see something, right? You can't distinct something. And here I think I went to the toilet or something. <laughs> so let's move on. Okay. So that was a really good Hornet fight. I got zero hits, which is amazing. Um, this guy is also not a hard boss. There's nothing hard about Enraged Guardian. You just can... It either that you make a big mistake and land on something that he does, or you get cornered or RNG'd by something. Like he jumps on you like that. <laughs> Did you see that? That was really hard. Like, how was I supposed to... Like, I guess I could get out of that with Shade Cloak. Look at this. Look at this. Two eyes from both sides and he's jumping on me. I mean... Like, the only way I can get out of this is Shade Solo or D-Dark. But you need to be really fast to actually acknowledge that it's happening. Let's see if I could be fast and do that. I see those rays. No. It's very hard to react to that. That's just... This is just bullshit. I don't know. It's very hard to react to that. You can react, but... You can dash through, but you need, you need to realize that it's going to happen. Because, look, look. Look, look, look. I'm standing here. Let's, 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 let's slow this down a bit. Half speed, okay? Yeah, yeah, that's not interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, where's the interesting part? No, where is it? Okay, so I'm standing here, I see those lasers are going to shoot, but they're not going to hit me, right? So I don't care. Okay. You see, I don't care, but at the same time, he jumps on me. And that's something I didn't expect. You see? Two lasers are going to hit me, and he's jumping on me. So... <laughs> Yes, I can dash through, but I did not expect to need to dash. I thought I'd just stand here and nothing happens. I didn't expect him to jump on me. There was no need to dash. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, that's the issue there. With better reaction, I can dash, yes. With better reaction, I can dash. But it was very hard to react to that. I don't know. If you can expect something like that. Also, you can preemptively dash without knowing what's going to happen. You can dash and hit into him, which is also bad. I don't know. Okay, so Lostkin, you know how much I like Lostkin. So basically, I know. I can understand it is on reflection level. And also, that's not what you would do according to the strats. Yeah, that is true. And also, again, if you do something preemptively and not reactively, like you're trying to prevent something before it happens, you might make a bigger mistake. Or not a bigger mistake, but the same mistake. Because you can dash into your enemy just because you're trying to preemptively dash away from something else, you know? So it was a very, very bad situation to be in. Okay, so Lost Kin, I hate this guy, but I know what I'm doing wrong. So for this, for this hitting example, this is a really good example. What you shouldn't do against Lost Kin. This is a really good example. Okay, so there's a ghost spawning here. Okay, so the right thing to do 
with this ghost is to wait. Usually you would hit a laser, but the side laser will far away. This is how to notice in one second. Yeah. Yeah, it's very fast. It's very fast. It closes down on you from both sides and he jumps on you. Like, it was really like a... If, if I dashed away, that would have been a clutch, cool, epic gamer moment. But it didn't happen. So, let's forget about it. <laughs> okay, so Lost Skin. Here's the issue. Look at this. Look at the situation. We've got a ghost spawning here, right? And we've got Lost Skin here. The right thing to do here is not jump and hit the ghost, but wait for Lost King to make one of his moves and then go for the ghost. That's the right thing to do. The right thing to do, because if you jump preemptively, he can very fast hit you. That's literally what knights do in chess. Lasers are the bishops. Oh man, these analogies for chess. P.O.P. P.O.P. Okay, anyway, let's uh, talk about this again. So you don't want to jump here. You want to wait, see what um, Lost King does, react to it, and then kill the ghost. You don't want to jump into the ghost and lose your mobility. But because I am Pepega, that's what exactly what I do. So if we lower this a bit, slow this down, I'm jumping. I didn't kill the ghost, and I got hit. Because the ghost didn't, didn't complete the spawn yet. I jump, I didn't kill the ghost, and I got hit. So you don't want to do that. You want to wait for the move from Lost Kin, dodge it, and then kill the ghost. So that was very bad. But we understand what we did wrong. And basically that's the cycle you want to keep against Lost Kin. Every time you want to wait for him to do something, dodge it, and then make your move. He does something, then you jump. He does something, then you jump. He does something, then you jump. Oh, we got the audio back now. Why does he always do that when I jump? Oh, <laughs> fuck you! Let's I always that. do that. Okay, I did that Why? again. You see? I did it again. I didn't wait for his move. Look. He jumped. And a ghost is now spawning. Okay? Again, I did the same mistake. It's, it's the same mistake. I jump and I get hit by his move. Why does he... <laughs> you always do that when I jump. And here again! Oh, fuck! Third time the same mistake! Why? Why Look, I hit him. A ghost is spawning. Dude, it's the same mistake. I make the same mistake again and again and I get pissed by it. I always do that when I, I hit jump. the ghost, I get smacked. Oh, fuck. Every you. time the same shit. Okay. Okay, hopefully we learned from this. Hopefully. <laughs> if I wait, he doesn't do it. If I jump, he instantly does it. So I can't even react. Uh-huh, yeah. We know it's my fault. Yeah. We know Fuck it's not his game. fault. <laughs> It's hard to see these things while you're like in a tense fight. When you're trying to be focused and play well and stuff. You just get pissed by getting hit. You don't really um, see your mistakes. But in hindsight, we can see them very well. That I just jumped preemptively and that was wrong. It's fine. We took three hits from Lost King. Could be worse. Solid trick. So 
Nothing is really interesting in this fight, to be fair. You're just dodging ghosts, looking for Noah's where she spawns, charging nail arts, and shooting. A very, very boring fight, honestly. You wanna really avoid getting cornered by the ghost, but sometimes you can't do anything about it. Sometimes you just get cornered, no. or sometimes that was just a that was just a mobility mistake, right? Yeah. No. Why did I dash to the right there? That was bad. And that's the reason I got hit, right? Yeah. No. Why? Why did I dash? I don't know. But it was my bad. It's not RNG or something. But mostly I'm afraid you to go there. So afraid. Very boring fight overall. Nothing much to say about it. Avoid the ghosts. Don't jump into thorns. I'm so afraid. Hit no eyes. Please. Don't get cornered. No. Let's see Is... that. No. Could I have yeah. not get hit there? Yeah. Let's see. So it's slower. Yeah. <laughs> Is... No, I couldn't have. Well, I could have dashed, I guess. You see, you see that ghost down there. This ghost down here, I, I think I only caught a glimpse of it while dropping down. I don't think I had enough time to react. You just didn't see that coming, yeah. yeah. If I did see that coming, I could have dashed right or left. No! <laughs> Help! Two hits from here and three hits from Lost King. <sighs> so bad. <laughs> so bad. And where's my music? <laughs> I paused the fight in the middle just to listen to, to more music. Very professional pro gamer moment. Okay. So this fight is very boring, there's really nothing to say. I think there are... You see what I'm doing here? It's very long, it takes a lot of time. I think there are better strats to fighting Traitor Lord, not taking damage and still beating him faster. This is like... This is like a strat that I'm using since, since I started Pantheons, and that I... I used and I got used to it, but... There are better ways to fight Traitor Lord. Just, just to not waste so much time between attacks. Like, there are many attacks that you can shriek and deal more damage. This is basically a very slow strat. Seems to me like a save strat. It's a strat that I use when I want to say I don't want to take any damage, you know? I have enough time, I have enough patience, I don't want to take any damage, so, so I do this. I double jump to the side, I hit. I double jump to the side, I hit. If I double jump and he's close to me, I double jump and I dash. There's really nothing special about this. It's just to not take damage. I just don't want to take damage. I would usually won't move or dash through, and the problem is that I can miss the first wave attack. I'm afraid to not move, honestly, against this guy. To not move. Like, there are basically, basically he does two types of attacks, right? He does either this dash, right, when he, he's getting ready and then he dashes towards you. That. Or he does this, that he jumps, and basically when he jumps, you can stand very close to him and shriek and he won't hit you. The problem with that is that you need to... The problem is you need to 
every time you need to um, um, anticipate what he's going to do. And I rather do something that doesn't care what he does, and I still get out of whatever he does, and I still put a, dem put a hit in. That's the issue. But you can, you can uh, wait for his dash attack like this and just dash through it. And you or you can wait for this jump attack. When he jumps, I just walk below him. Yes. And dash through the charge. Yes, you can do that. The problem with that is that you need to keep being on your toes, like being concentrated and being sure that you recognize correctly what he's going to do, what his, next, what his next attack is, right? You need to make sure you know what's going to happen. And with my uh, strat, you don't care what he does. You just jump away, hit, jump away, hit, jump away, hit, regardless of what he does. You don't care what he does. And I think that's better for, like, not taking damage, you know? Because it's not a speedrun, right? I'm not in a hurry for... Okay. So this was amazing. Let's just enjoy this. This is so good! This is so satisfying! That's fine, but again, the wave will come at some point and neither walking into it or dashing through the boss won't work. So I have to keep an eye on the phase change? Yes, that is true. You have to keep an eye. That's a fine guide material on how to play volleyball. Dude, when you get... Look, the fight... I just want to show you something. You never get this RNG. This is great RNG. Hey Jax, watching the Emmy winning movie are we? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Dude, this RNG was amazing. Look at this RNG. The fight starts. The first attack that he does sets up the juggle. The first thing he does sets up the juggle. And then I can juggle the entire fight. I don't need to fight him at all. I just need to keep the juggling. This is amazing RNG. I'm very glad that happened. Because you... I, I never get this RNG. Obviously you need to execute the juggle really well and keep the ball in the air and... You know, but still... Getting this opportunity from the start of this fight is amazing. Okay, we, we got the point, right? I'm juggling him until he dies. That's... yeah. Let's... Press forward... Uh-huh, and he dies... And I'm very happy about myself! <laughs> Everyone is happy! Nice. 
So wait, let's pause. So because we didn't get hit by White Defender and we didn't get hit by Traitor Lord, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12. We got 12 lifeblood going into the 7 final bosses. Which is amazing. Amazing. I, I don't think I ever had 12 lifeblood going into the final bosses. So why do I do that? Why don't I pogo him when he does that? Here. The reason is I'm afraid. I'm afraid that if I greed on, on one hit pogo, I'm gonna hit him and take damage. That's why I just jump over him and use the shade sword. Because you can pogo him as well. You can hit him with the nail while he does that. I'm just afraid of taking an extra hit there. I just don't pogo him. I just shoot the shade sword and that's it. Because I'm afraid of getting hit. Again, same thing. Because you can hit there. You can hit here. Oh, you see? You can hit there. It's just kind of dangerous because you're very close to him. And you want to be really solid and careful when you're at the final bosses, you know? <laughs> That's scary. It still scares me even watching this right now. It's a very scary move. Because it happens fast. No! Here? You see? Why there. you don't do that? You see that? No! You see? Let's look at it again. No! And that's why I don't like that. It was bad. But I greeted and I did it and I got hit. Monka S. And phase 2 is really annoying Because I don't know how to do the speedrunner strat Because you can hit at this stage when he's diving But I don't know how to do it So it makes this phase a lot longer And this was bad, look, look So the mistake here Okay, the mistake here is that I should shriek before I attack. Look at this. I... Let's do it slower. I jump, hit, and then I shriek. You see? And this shriek keeps me in the air. That's my mistake. I should have shrieked first, did the spell first, and then hit. Because then I would be... Um, uh, I could control my character. Instead, I use the spell, late, and the orb is coming at me. You, you can see this orb coming at me. And I can't do anything. I think this makes me think of changing the strats for charge attacks to be more solid. I still pogo NKG after charge attacks. What? <laughs> what? Anyway, I shouldn't have shrieked here after attacking. I should have shrieked first and then attacked, or not shriek at all. 
And then of course I get hit because I can't get out of that situation. That's Pepega. I knew it was a bad shake and I did it anyway. <laughs> Even past me knows I made a mistake there. Okay, now we're going for the big boys, Markov and Zote and all the big boys, oh my god. I'm getting tilted just by thinking about it. So here, usually I jump to the middle platform and I pogo him because he always starts at the same location, Markov. I don't know how to describe the attack properly, the one from above and a charge through which you avoid with dashing at the top. I don't really understand what you're talking about, but... The one from above and a charge through. Oh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I know that attack. Okay. You pogo that? I never pogo that. Never. Okay. Anyway, with Markov, look at this. So, Markov always spawns around here, to the right of the middle platform. Here. Where my mouth is. I hope you can, you can see my mouse, by the way. It's here. If you can't see my mouse, please tell me. Anyway, he always spawns here. Yes, I just get used to it, but it's risky. Risky? Why do you even do that? Anyway, <laughs> anyway, Markov always spawns here, so I always like to jump on the middle platform and pogo him for a few hits. But for some reason, when this fight starts, my jump works in a very weird way. I'm trying to double jump, and you see I'm not getting the wings. You see? You see, I only got the jump. I didn't get the double jump, I don't know why, jump, and no double jump, and you see? I couldn't I jump? That was weird, so that's why I didn't do it. The fuck? Okay, and these things are very hard to handle. Like, you're in the air against Markov, and you want to land on a platform, so you want to avoid his shield that almost hits you. Look at this, his shield is almost on me. But I avoid it, okay, and now I want to land on the platform, I'm back, sorry, I was brushing my teeth, okay, that's uh, very, very important. Anyway, look at this, this is actually pretty cool, let's slow this down. I couldn't I jump. Look at this, look how close I am to his shield. Look, look at this. Okay, so I didn't hit, get hit by the shield, and now I want to land back on the platform, and his dagger spawns exactly where I need to land. So, like, what, what are you going to do there? Like, the only thing I can do is try and land to the left, right? Go to the left here, dash to the left or something, to the wall. But, I, but you don't expect this, right? You don't expect this to spawn exactly here. Right? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> okay, what happened there? Okay, so we saw that this dagger is about to come here and we still went for the hit and the hit push us back, right? That's the problem. We did the nail out, the nail out, oh no, it didn't push us back, I just pressed right. So I shouldn't have pressed right, that's the problem. I pressed right into the dagger, yeah, that's my bad. We go with the bullshit. It's not bullshit, it was my bad. 
Okay. So as long as you see the daggers, you can avoid them and dodge them. As long as you see where Malkoth is, you can easily dodge him. But if you don't see where the daggers spawn, it's a lot harder. So let me get this straight. This stream is just about analyzing how much of a chad you are. <laughs> No, I just want to watch this epic uh, completion of a very hard challenge and analyze my mistakes. It also helps me think about what I want to do next, which kind of challenge. So basically this phase is the same as the first one, it's just a bit faster with the daggers. You don't want to land on the daggers, you want to watch where they are. You want to use the opportunities to hit Markov. BS is just too solid of an argument in fast conversation. True, true. You see the daggers so you can dodge them. Not hard. Okay, that was Pepega. Let's look at this. That was bad. Because I see Markov coming. He's coming. He keeps coming. He keeps coming. And I'm still staying here. I kid, but seriously, very chat behavior for completing a challenge this hard. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's part of... Why do you think I have this beard? To look more like a giga chat. Of course. Of course. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so I see Markov coming and I'm still staying here, which is really bad. You shouldn't do this ever. You shouldn't stay on this platform when you see Markov keeps going at you. And not only I'm staying here, I'm charging an attack. And I'm hitting! <laughs> so I get cornered by Markov and his daggers. This is so bad. Don't do this. Please don't do this. The f Okay, and what was that? Okay, so after that, we land here. This dagger just hits me out of nowhere. Okay, I don't think I could have done anything with that dagger. It's all coming together. The beard increases your power by 30%. Exactly. Exactly. The beard is like the... Like the shaman stone charm. Fuck! Okay, I couldn't have done anything against that second... Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, that dagger is coming. I didn't even see it spawning. Because I was busy um, hitting him. And by the time that I realize what's happening, yeah, I get hit. I don't think I could have done anything against that. It was just too fast. Just too fast. But a very good Markov fight. If you get 4 hits from Markov, it's not that bad. Really not that bad. Okay, and here's our friend. Oh my god. I'm getting tilted just by watching this again. Fuck this. Fuck this boss, really. What happened here? I hit him and I dash away. So he jumps. And he lands on me. After I dashed. Like, wh wh uh, what? I hit, I dash away. After I hit once, he jumps. Dude, what was I supposed to do here? <laughs> I was, how was I supposed to be knowing that he's gonna jump exactly on me after that? Okay. Okay. That's bullshit number one. Zot bullshit number one. We need a counter for Zot bullshit. And okay. So the Zotling is coming. 
I'm trying to dash away. Why did why did I dash away? And the Zoltling randomly. I shouldn't have me. dashed away. That's the problem. That's the problem. I am dashing. I'm dashing away. Yeah, that's the same shit that was happening with me during my fight with Lost Kin. He would just jump on me after I dodged away from an attack. Actually, I watched my Lost Kin fight here in the Pantheon, and it was mostly my fault. Mostly my fault. You need to time your jumps with Lost Kin after he does something. It's very hard to do, but but it was mostly my fault when I got hit there. Uh, I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but when I watched my fight, it was mostly my fault. I figured it out too. It helped out a lot. Good. Good, 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 good. good. I'll probably not do Descending Dark. Where? Where? Where you won't do Descending Dark? And the here? Yeah. yeah and the that Zoltling thing randomly jumps on me. I agree. I agree that Descending Dark was bad. Fully bad. Although sometimes it wasn't really something I could control and was just how events unfolded. Happens. Because Lost Skin sometimes jumps randomly. Okay, so here I descend in dark just to kill his Zotlings. See, both of them are coming at me, so I descend in dark to kill them. Which I think is a good move, by the way. I had to... Okay, so I'm cornered. I'm cornered by him. He summons the bombs. I hit him a few times. I did dark. And I, I had to... And I dash dashed. out. Wait, maybe I shouldn't have dashed? I... Yeah, in hindsight I shouldn't have dashed at all. Right? There was no need to dash. Yeah, why am I, I dashing? Had to dash. I... What do you want me to do? No, I didn't have to dash. I had. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I just could have stayed in place, stand in, one, stand in the same place after I did dark. I hit him, hit him, did dark, stand in place. Oh no, I, I, I would have got hit by his fall. Okay. So I would take one damage instead of two damage if I stayed in the same place. Okay. I had to dash. What do you want me to do? <laughs> He's cornering me like that. He did corner me. He did corner me. And, uh, like, I hate when that happens. Like, I de-dark him, and then I go to the left, and he runs on me. What am I supposed to do? I hate that? this boss so much! <laughs> yes. That's bullshit number two. That's Zod bullshit. That's nothing I can do. That was a good de-dark. Solid de-dark. Don't need to heal. How am I supposed to deal with that? <laughs> okay, that's a good chance to heal. Me dashing. My bad dashing after he summon and starts walking towards you. Maybe dashing? Uh, in hindsight, yeah, but in real time you can't really do that. You don't expect it. You don't know what he's gonna do. I wanna heal, but... I'm afraid. And sometimes when you dash, you're dashing into him. It's very Pepega. How to how to decide what to do there? 
Okay, so I did like there just to get out of his zone things. And I'm actually... But there is also quite bad position in Zotlings, yeah. But notice this, I got a lot of hits from Zot, but I healed to full. That's very important, that I, that I managed to heal to full. Very important. The fact that I got so many good opportunities to heal, really helped in this fight. So I'm basically at 4 HP, I, I had much more HP with the blue HP. But this is very good to be in this Can position. Can we not fuck up against failed champion? Yeah, and this guy is just... This guy is just... If you're focused enough, you beat this easily. If you're not focused, you get smacked in two seconds. That's basically it. Every mistake I make against this guy is just lack of focus. Be right back? Okay. So there are two things that really wants attention. By the way, say hello to my cat. Hello, 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 hello. Um, basically in this fight, you want to keep spacing. One of the big mistakes that I did against this guy many times, keep to the strat that is fast yet easy, you should be fine. Yeah, but also there's, a, there's an issue with spacing here. And what I mean by that is, you don't want to stand too far away from this guy. And it's a very misleading issue because you want to dodge his attacks on the one hand, like his uh, shockwave, but on the other hand, you don't want to stand too far away from him. Hello? You, you don't want to stand too far away from him because if you stand too far away from him, when you dash or when you jump, you basically jump into him, which is really bad. You want to stay relatively close to him and dodge his attacks. That's something that I did in this fight, which is good. You see, I'm never running away from him. I'm always standing kind of close. No! And that was a very bad dash. Very bad dash. <laughs> very bad. Don't do that. Hit. Dream nail. Hit. Heal. Hit. Dream nail. Hit. Heal. Yeah. No, not to maintain vision of him. Because look at what I'm doing. This fight. I'm basically looking for opportunities to cyclone, right? So what I need to do to cyclone, I need to dash under him, basically. To get opportunities to cyclone. That will never happen if I'm standing far away from him. You see? I always need to be kinda close to him. You see what I mean? You see how I'm playing it? See? Dash under him, Cyclone. So you wanna be kinda close to him so you can do that. So you can actually dash under him. That's why you keep close. You keep the spacing close. And Cyclone and Shriek, very standard stuff. Again, and I'm about to make a mistake, so let's look at the mistake. I'm keeping spacing, everything is fine. No. Oh, okay. So, you really need to not automatically dash. I see. I must admit that I'm not used to cycloning. You should. 
It's a great spell. It's a great nail out. It's amazing. It does so much damage. So look at this mistake. I'm automatically dashing under him because I think I'm going to be able to dash under him and cyclone again. But that's very bad. You need to look at where he's jumping at. You can't just do this. Don't do this preemptively. Try and wait a bit to see where he's jumping at before you dash. Because if you don't, you see what happens. No! Yeah. And you take two hits like a Pepega. Very scary. Hit. Stream nail. Hit. Heal. But that's only because Hit. I didn't try Stream nail binding yet. Hit. Heal. Yeah, when you're using... We actually passed this shit this time. When you're playing with bindings, you have to use nail outs. You have to, to use NKG. nail outs. It's the it's only way time. out. So we beat failed champion even though we fucked up. So now it's NKG. So NKG... I really changed my strat completely into only nail arts against him. Yeah. Not only, nail arts and spells. I will try developing a habit also because it is a beautiful move. It is a really cool move. I used to fight against NKG with regular nail hits, but after um, learning nail arts and after practicing NKG a bit, I decided to change to nail arts. Because it fits really well with the timing. Like you need, you, you need like a window to hit, and the window works really well with nail outs. And nail outs deal more damage than the regular nail, so... That's why I'm doing it. That's why I'm charging nail outs all the time. So I'm guessing most people do this when he does the pillows. Pillows attack. That you just like stutter step to the side. You move slowly to the side to, to, to bait the pillars to not hit you. And then you can get a free hit. I'm guessing this is something that everyone knows, but if you guys don't 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 know this, I can explain it a bit. Yeah. But I, I think it's quite everything. understood. That's another nice thing that I've learned. You can heal. Yeah, I forgot everything. You can heal in the already. spikes attack. You see? There's a lot of time to heal here. So yeah, I forgot. I got hit. And then there's the spike yeah. attack. And then I already. dodge it. So I got time to heal while it ends. Which is really nice. It's also something I learned. Again, same thing. And here you just need to um, keep doing the same thing. Dodge his attacks, uh, charge nail outs, and hit him when you have a, a window of opportunity to hit. Nothing special here. Don't need to heal. Hit him. And when he does this, you can bait the pillars. Uh, I don't know. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. I didn't mean to do that. Again, with the pillars, you bait them. Shriek. Whoosh. Again. Very like very th this fight is very much about execution. The RNG is very low in this fight. You just need to execute really well. That's it. Because he's fast. That's it. Good execution and you should win the fight. Oh, and another cool thing, when he does this crap, how's this, this, this crap, and then he jumps, right? He jumps, and then he drops his projectiles. His projectiles, um, they always fall 
directly from him in, in the same spread. So like if you see where exactly he ended his jump in the air, you can just move aside from that area and it won't hit you, the projectile. So yeah, hits, jumps, look at where he ends the jump, that's where the projectiles start spreading from, and you just move away from that specific position between the projectiles. The point is that the middle projectile will always drop perpendicularly to the ground, meaning that you always have space to stand nearby. So, okay, so we beat NKG. We've done to two hard bosses. Pure Vessel is gonna be a really bad fight, you're gonna see. Really, really bad fight. I make a lot of mistakes here. Okay, so before the fight starts, I'll just explain that I have a method for Pure Vessel, I even posted a guide on Pure Vessel on YouTube and my method works on jumping. I always preemptively jump before he attacks, always. Uh, and that enables me to dodge most of what he does. So this is why you'll see a lot of jumping here. You see I'm jumping a lot, regardless of what he does. Ah. And that's the problem with jumping, that in very there is a very low chance that you jump, and he jumps exactly on your jump location. You can't predict it, you can't expect it, and he jumps very very fast, so... Yeah. Ah. But so far it's working pretty well, besides that jump, it was unfortunate. No! That was just bad timing, by me. No! Because I needed to wait with the dash. I didn't wait with the dash, I dashed early. I dashed into the dagger, and it was too early. No! The dash was too soon. Yep!
There's nothing much to say. I just... No, I touched the sword. Oh, wait, wait. So I dodged the attack. Look at this. I'm standing between the swords. Nothing is bad. Everything is great. And then I just... For some unknown reason... I just move to the right. Look at this. No, I touched the... <laughs> what the fuck am I doing there? Look! Why? No, I... Why do I do that? Again! I'm standing perfectly between the swords. I shouldn't get hit, everything is fine. And then... No... <laughs> the fuck is happening there? Okay. Let's continue. No, I touched the sword! <laughs> oh, why? I could only imagine that you felt the pace of combat is faster than it actually was. Maybe. Maybe. That's, that's an interesting uh, point of view. Dodges, if I may say so. No, okay, I that shouldn't. Was, okay, that's a classic mistake that you shouldn't do at this level. No, because you know when when you get parried here, you should dash back. I'm back to view more gamer moves. So basically, pure vessel. If he parries you, you need to dash into him. Here, he parries me. I need to dash into him, but I. For some reason that we will never know, instead of dashing into him, I dash backwards and I get hit. No, I should have dashed into him. <laughs> out. <laughs> Damn. Not enough pure vessel practice. This pantheon. You always dash through. Yep. Yep. I'm so afraid. So I'm at 3 HP, which basically means 2 hits and I'm dead. That's what it basically means. So I'm healing, because I'm afraid. Okay, that was interesting. Let's see that. So I jumped. Yeah, that was a very fast jump. Could I have avoided that? I don't see him. I jump? No, look at where he teleports. There was no way to react to this. Dude, there was no way to react to this. What the fuck? This is bullshit. Look at this. I jump. It just appears. Look at this. What the fuck? How are you supposed to react to this? <laughs> what is this? This is crazy. But if you had four, it would be the same until you got hit and healed again. These bindings? Yeah. Bullshit moment? Kinda bullshit. I mean, how do you react to this? You need like super ultra fast reaction to this. What the? Ah, what the fuck? 
could have never seen that. That was... Yeah, that was what the fuck moment. A definite what the fuck moment. I need to stagger him to heal. So now I have to heal. No, no. Oh, look at this. To stagger him to heal. So he's doing the circles attack. And I'm trying to use this time to heal. But there's a circle spawning on me. Basically, now... Basically now, look at this, I have 2 HP, I'm trying to heal, this thing is about to blow up on me, this circle thing. If I don't dash out, or run out, I'm dead and the run is over. No, no! <laughs> now I can't heal. Did you see that? Yikes. Holy shit. Heal. I try to heal again. This time it works. So, so we're at 3 HP and out of danger for now because only two hits, not one hit. And I want to show you the end of this fight, because that's the most bullshit I've seen in a while. Look at the end of this fight. After I beat him. So in a few... In a few moments. I was more patient with the jumps and the, and the dashes, that was really good. Okay, look at this. I killed him, okay? Wait, look at this. Just a second. Okay, when I hit with the spell, I hit him. He's dead. The, the fight is over. But his circle attack, focus attack, whatever it's called, is still going. You see? He's focusing. I hit him, he's dead. But the circles are still going. You see this? Craziness? I beat him. But this thing for some reason is still going. And I actually get hit. By it. Wait. Oh, okay. So, if I wasn't at 3 HP there, I'm dead. You realize what happened there? I already beat him, but the attack still kept on going, so I would die there. I would actually die there if I wasn't at 3 HP. That's what that means. Wait. Oh, okay. Th that's such... like... Craziness. And, and this fight I'm just gonna let you guys watch. Because it's a good fight and there's really nothing to say about this. I thought this. he was dead and then I got hit and I was like, what the fuck? Absolute Radiance. Remember our practice.
Phase 1, solid, not taking damage, dodging everything. Phase 1, perfect. Perfect. That was a tricky dodge. Did you see that? That was a very tricky dodge. It's good. I am playing this very well, if I may say so myself. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know why I fell off there. These flawless sword dodges, I can't do it. I need to be solid in space. Look at this, I just, I just jump and hit and I fall off, not on purpose, <laughs> but in hindsight it was good to fall, because look at what's happening here, there's an overlap of projectiles, this is coming from the right side, and the daggers are coming from the left side, so actually falling off and taking one damage was better than dealing with all of this shit. Maybe in hind in hindsight, I didn't mean to fall off, but it was just lucky. Traded, exactly. Oh, almost fell. Exactly. Calculated. Calculated. Intended. Okay. If that was even worth it, jumping all that for one hit. Again, I don't know if it's worth it doing all of this jumping for one hit. Maybe it's not. That's kind of scary. That's okay. Ah, oh, climb. Look at how many times I almost get hit. Almost. No! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god!
<sighs> Thank you guys. Thank you for the GGs. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> classical music in the background. Ah, so bright! 86 minutes! <laughs> Speedrun, yeah. Okay, we're just gonna... We're just gonna stare at this right now. Like, we don't need to do anything else. We just look at this, right? It's like... Just look at this beautiful... Bright lights. Ah... Oh my god. Oof. <sighs> I was so nervous against Pure Vessel and Absolute Radiance. I was so nervous. Yes, I was. Only two hits on Absrad and it was one damage hits. That's pretty good. Yeah, it was. It was good. Absrad was a good fight. Also, you saw I didn't I didn't pogo completely. I like kind of pogo and kind of did my strat. Mhm. Mm like mixed it. Cause the pogo, sometimes the pogo is like, I feel like it puts me in a bad position. Oh my god! Guys! Ah. <laughs> ah. Wow.